This is a brand new Honda Moto Compacto. And this is the 1983 Honda Moto Compo that that new Moto Compacto is based on. And in today's video, we're gonna do an old versus new comparison between the two. Now this brand new Honda Moto Compacto is electric, which makes a ton of sense for a vehicle this size. And up front here, you can see the charging port. Now this vehicle has a front hub motor. It can do about 15 miles per hour and 12 miles of range, and it charges in around three to three and a half hours. And this Moto Compo is a 49cc two stroke with 2.5 horsepower and 2.7 pound feet of torque. Of course, it's rear wheel drive and we've gotten it up to around 25 miles per hour. The rear wheel here is where you actually apply the brakes. You can see the brake components right there and it's just got a single brake lever up on the handlebar. Now the old school Moto Compo is a little bit more substantial so it has brakes both front and rear and it also has suspension. Here at the center of the handlebars you have a power button that you hold in order to power on the bike and then you have a very simple LED screen that shows you your battery amount shows you your speed and you also start out with this number one on the screen and what that means is if you press the throttle nothing will happen until you actually are already moving that way if you're standing next to the bike and it's on and you accidentally hit the throttle nothing bad is going to happen however if you double press the power button it'll switch you into mode two and then you actually get power from a standstill and it raises your top speed from 10 miles per hour to 15 miles per hour. Controls for this bike are very simple. You just have this thumb throttle, you have a single handbrake and a bell. The Moto Compo by comparison has a traditional key like an old school motorcycle and then moving up instead of a screen you have this really cool backlit gauge that gives you a little bit of a grid pattern behind and of course this is a Japanese market vehicle so it displays in kilometers per hour but it's a cool looking gauge it's also got a little oil light there and then moving over you do have some more controls because this is a more substantial scooter and so you've got a horn you've got turn signals and you've got your headlight control here as well. As far as styling goes, this Moto Compacto is very simple. It's basically just a blank slate of white, which makes it a departure from the older Moto Compo because that has a lot of very retro styling. But what is very similar to the old Moto Compo is that it's very blocky. There's a lot of bodywork, so you don't see a lot of the components and inner workings of this bike from the outside, it's just very clean and simple. By far the best thing about this 1983 Moto Compo is the styling of it. It has more personality than the new Moto Compacto. It's got this cool Moto Compo font on the side. It's got all these funky warning labels and lots of labels to tell you functionally where you're supposed to pick the bike up. The way that this is put together is super, super cool. So I absolutely love the styling on these. It's hard to beat. Now I'm gonna try my hand at folding up the Moto Compo. I haven't really had the chance to practice this. And of course with the old school Moto Compo, I've done it many times. So it's not really gonna be quite a fair comparison, but you pop this seat off and then what you're able to do is fold it flat and put this latch back in place. And then this stores in what they call the bathtub. So you drop it down here into this opening and then similar thing, your handlebars fold up sideways, almost like old school CT90s did back in the day. And the cool thing about this is if you're walking around with it, you can actually walk with it like this, keeps it very narrow, makes it easy to, uh, to push around. So that's kind of cool. And then what you can do is you can go ahead and unlatch some of these pieces. Drop that down, and then, well, let's see, I gotta let it drop down just a little bit further. Okay, got that. Now, these pegs you lift up on a little bit, they fold in, and then there's one more latch that lets you push the rear wheel in place. And just like that, not too painful to watch me figure out for the first time. You've got a folded up Moto Compo, Moto Compacto. Pretty easy. Now here's where the engineering on this Moto Compo is really impressive. It's actually a very easy thing to fold and unfold. So you start by pulling this cover here in the center. Then you can actually drop the seat down, set the cover off to the side, 
you fold the mirror down. And since I've done this a number of times, I've got kind of an order of operations that I usually go for when I fold this up. So I typically fold down the handlebar that has the gauge on it first, because that makes it a little easier to drop the other handlebar down on top of it, because if this one goes down first, it's a little bit more difficult to get both of those to drop. Then you unfold this top cover, slot it into place, and you just have to give it a good press to get it to snap down. And then there you go. You can fold up the pegs and just like that, it's folded. So it's a really easy process to figure out, but I will say ooh, it's heavier. This is 99 pounds, which is not super heavy, but the new Moto Compo at 41 pounds is yeah less than half the weight. Once it's folded up, this Moto Compo is just 29.2 inches long, 21.1 inches tall, and it's only 3.7 inches wide and total weighs about 41 pounds. So it's a really easy thing to transport. Once it's folded up, this Moto Compo is 46.7 inches long, it's 9.4 inches wide and 21.3 inches tall. So it's definitely bigger than the Moto Compacto and realistically, you can't lift it up with one hand. Here we go, off on the Moto Compo ride. I guess, uh, <laughs> true to the original Moto Compo, it's, it's a little, a little squirrely. I mean, there's no getting around that with having tiny wheels. You can definitely tell that uh, there isn't suspension like there is on the old school one. Now, we're at top speed, 50 miles per hour. Uh, you don't really need suspension. Got a little course set up here. So obviously we're gonna start a, a spec Moto Compo race series. I know I can definitely get my coworker Alex on board with that. Question would be, on this uh, racetrack, what would be faster, the new or the old? It's a, I'll say a good question, because the old one takes a while to get up to speed. Yeah, these are actually pretty fun to ride. <laughs> yeah, they're definitely not fast, but I don't think that's uh, the intention. A little front wheel burnout. Yeah. Can confirm it will do a burnout. <laughs> now, when it comes to riding, in most ways, these two bikes are very different because it's gas versus electric, it's front hub motor versus rear drive, it's a bike with suspension and two brakes versus no suspension and one brake. I mean, really, they're kind of different classes of vehicle. This is a scooter. You know, it's got turn signals, it's got the headlight, it's got a place for a license plate. So this was meant to be a little bit more street rideable that being said, even though it does 25 roundabout, which is more than what the Moto Compacto can do, it's still small and slow for American roads especially. I mean, that's pretty much rung out right there. One thing that these two bikes do have in common is the handling. I mean, this Moto Compo at speed is twitchy <laughs> on these tiny wheels. There's no getting around that. It's it's not a great handling bike at speed. It's a little sketchy. But yeah, I mean, this is it's just a more substantial vehicle. Now it's important to talk a little bit about value because that's one of the areas that's kind of most surprising about these older Moto Compos is they can go for a good bit of money. I've seen some go for five or six thousand uh, dollars. We got this one for thirty-seven hundred dollars in really nice shape. So we're pretty happy about that. Back in the day, I think they retailed around $750. Of course, these were made to go along with the Honda City. They went in the trunk of that car. And so it was an option and a very expensive option for those cars for the Japanese market between 1983, well, 1981 and 1983. So part of the reason that these are expensive is they only made about 53,000, 369 of them, I think. So they are hard to find, and that's part of the reason why they're expensive. It's unclear how many Moto Compactos Honda is going to plan to produce per year and how hard they're gonna to be to get your hands on, but MSRP is 995. 
So certainly the new Moto Compacto is a lot less expensive, but at the end of the day, I do still think that the Moto Compo is cooler than the new Moto Compacto, but I love the fact that Honda is paying some homage to their heritage in that space and making something new like it. So we here are actually hoping to buy one, get our hands on one so that we can have both the new and the old. And let me know down in the comments below what you think, which one you guys would wanna ride more. And we'll see you all in the next video.